up? All right. Oh, you have a topic? Yeah, let's chat. It. Well, let's chat what we're going to chat about. Basically, uh, neighbors together. But we'll chat about like where we're at. Bottoms up. Community, oh, yeah. Like, we're bottoms history up. History of that. Community garden. Yeah. Um, Co-founder Jason Barnes is in the kitchen making breakfast. Yeah. We've been here <laughs> to eight years. Uh, it was a vacant lot. Blighted. Um, now where it's like a thriving garden. People come in and eat, take chicken eggs, um, goat milk. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, we started off with a few hardcore members. Um, obviously, Jason's been the mainstay over the years, myself to a lesser extent. And our mission statements on the wall um, it is we're dedicated to decolonizing the current industrial food sector, building a localized agricultural system, um, and bringing our neighbors together to around food systems. So. Solid. Yeah, man. It's. I mean, I'm a. Uh completely aligned with it that's the guardian grange you know that uh obviously you're a part of been a big help and same mission yeah same yeah. exact mission yeah. just decentralizing everything getting a local community base which is really what needs to happen you know to for society to get back to a thriving state instead of like this circles that we're running in that are just like continuing to deplete and destroy shit and like yeah, it's just a big, big mess, but it's all yeah, good. Normalize some different stuff, right? So, yeah, I mean, for kids who grew up here, they grew up in a neighborhood that had livestock for a good part of their life. Yeah, and right? where at and least on that corner, they can yeah, yeah. Like, see them there. Yeah, and where because we didn't go over that. Where are we at? We're in West Oakland. West Oakland and yeah. the Lower Bottoms, uh, the home of the Black Panthers, were founded here. Um, this is the first black neighborhood in Oakland. They all work at the Pullman Porter shipyard, all the black folks who came from uh, the south during like the migration in the 50s, um, especially during World War II, the shipyards were like pumping out boats for the war, like crazy. Yeah. So everybody came to work in the shipyards with the first black middle class, um, a lot of like history here over the years. And before black folks came here, at the turn of the century, this is where all the rich people in San Francisco used to come to summer. Yeah. Yeah, like the rich people thing, right? When you summer somewhere. Yeah. But these houses that you see around you are all built like the, you know, 1908. A lot of them have plaques on it, 1916, yeah. 1904. Dude, it reminds me of the, like, Northeast style architecture. Like, yeah, Victorian. Massachusetts and stuff. And yeah. these are ma massive homes, and people literally bought them to leave San Francisco because they were stinky and come over here where the weather was special. Yeah. Um, so it, it was designed. Uh, really purposeful. And it's a really cool neighborhood because it's a cul-de-sac. Not many neighborhoods don't have any food traffic. So if you're over here, then you're here for like, either you live here, you're here visiting someone. Um, but there aren't any like business sector. So it makes it like a really close-knit neighborhood. And it's the perfect place for, for us to do our thing and try to incubate the Neighbors Together program, which is uh, bringing people together, mainly around localized agricultural systems. Um, being our mainstay. We've seen like this whole area here has been transformative to the neighborhood. We obviously when we first moved here there were like dice games in our corner with like two two how many people Jason at the most? Hundred people at most, usually at least a couple dozen people. Yeah. Like armed guards. Like people on the outskirts. And how long ago was that when you first Five, rolled in? Six years. Yeah. We started eight years ago. Eight years ago. Uh, so now it's kind of gradually moved away. Yeah. We never asked anybody to move. Um, people just move. Yeah. And I kind of went to other places to do their thing. Right. And we're not just mental. Um, as long as you're not doing anything that's unsafe. The people who've been here for generations, you know, we just got here two years ago. We need to respect. Uh, I don't do the whole gentrification thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there is a global consolidation of wealth that's happening. Yeah, at right? big time. Yeah. Globally, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Here too, right? But in terms of people moving here, there ain't like no rich people moving here. You got a lot of upper middle class. You got some, but nobody's moving here to this neighborhood who not at least somewhat aware that they're moving into a black neighborhood that was impoverished for a few decades. Yeah. It's obvious when you come around here, it's, it's the hood, right? So you're going to spend $1.2, $1.5 million in the hood. You don't know. Then there's no restaurant. It's not like 
you move to a gentrified Brooklyn when it's coffee shop. It's none of that here. Yeah. Right? So like you move to North Oakland, you move somewhere else where you have we don't have that here. So people who come here are a little bit more um, free spirited, I would say. And it's better for us to embrace that than demonize people because they don't fit what the neighborhood traditionally looks like. The funny part about it is it's the people who live here aren't the ones doing that. It's just it's your less recent newcomer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, like, kind of just debunking that myth that black people don't want anybody to move with their hoods. It's just not true. Jason's well received. We got yeah. our neighbor Tim. Tim is the nerdiest, darkest white dude you could ever imagine <laughs> from Connecticut. Yeah. But he came here and he's mad about people speeding down the street. So, think about this, right? I move with a neighborhood in Oakland where people are known for car culture and sideshows. I complain about reckless driving and traffic violence. I learned that term from him. Pretty good term. Traffic violence. Really dramatic and shit. And then he puts up cameras on his house to catch people speeding to complain about it. Now, anywhere else, you're going to be like, you should justify it all of that? No, the neighborhood fucking loved it. Yeah. And now we have traffic circles coming. He fought and got traffic circles like Berkeley. So just like Berkeley has those things, we got them now. Because there's one new white dude moved in and was like, yo, this ain't safe. I ride bike. Like, but well, here's the thing. It's order of operation. Yeah. He didn't just do that from a position of, I know better than everyone here. He talked to everyone he could in the neighborhood. How would this be received? Would you be mad if I did that? No, it makes perfect sense to me. And that's how people are. Sometimes people just want to be respected and spoke to. The mm. idea itself wasn't the problem. And he done the idea without talking to elders and people in the neighborhood. They yeah. would have seen it as surveillance. Or I don't know what your intentions are. Or like, you know, like you just got here, you putting up cameras and shit. Mm. But he moved here within six months, he had put up cameras. What he did and how he did it were two different things. The lesson is how he did that shit. Yeah, he was right? involved. He involved, respected not the just, people who lived here in a yeah. non judgmental way, but he didn't back down from a leadership position that it should not be okay to allow people to drive through the streets at 70, 80 miles an hour. There's children here, there yeah. are elders here, right? And he doesn't assume because a few people say that's the culture here mm. that that it's a monolith or like that's what black people think. But that's the way it's track. Yeah. He's like, no, that's what a few people think. I want to proceed. Yeah. And he tells me all the heat he got, white folks, right? So mm -hmm. what I learned from that in this neighborhood is like it's a complex shit. Like this is the hood, bro. Like you got the projects, the, own, the two biggest projects in Oakland are both in this neighborhood, which is the reason why this is the black neighborhood. It's black and they all live in the projects for the most part. The people do live in the homes still, but not as much. It usually come from the housing project, and I mean it's probably the best place I've ever lived. Yeah, it's, it is, yeah, it's right? beautiful. Right, I'm mean, beautiful yeah. people. But they come here and get to piggyback in a good way off the work that the neighborhood's doing. And all that is is just honestly just trying to help people, trying to get past the division, look past the like all the psyops and all the social media division. Yeah, right. That's why all I call propaganda, us. I said that, that today. Yeah. So the guy was like, "How do we get in touch with you?" And I was like, "Oh, you can." You can find our propaganda here. He lied. And I was like, I always say propaganda because that's yeah. an inner term. Mm -hmm. Neutral. Yeah. Right? It is what it is. It just it's, means yeah. to make you do something. Yeah. I want to I want to change. I want to condition you and I want to move you to action. Right? So I, I'm using the medium to move you to action. It's propaganda. Yeah. I say that because I want people to be self-aware that everything you see is propaganda. Everything you consume, right, that you didn't produce yourself, it's meant to manipulate you in some way, whether good or bad, and you should be self-aware to the extent that you can. What is what is the reason for this, right? To put it together. Um, so that's a long asymmetrical story of the garden. And we're trying to show people how to live. And if you're gonna live in a city, we can transform the way cities are meant to be, right? You don't Big have time, to man. like move with a country to homestead. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right, you can do that shit in your block, right? Yeah, it just takes backyard. people to people to care, and like you said, you know, Take neighbors, people. neighbors together, the community, like people who actually care, like the the bro who moved in here. I mean, he what he knew inherently, what he as a good person is that people actually give a shit. People care about 
where their children are growing up, like the place in which they live. And it's always like outside perspective or outsiders moving through that are either passing judgment or like spinning up some propaganda saying like, oh, you know, these these p places are just bad places or something. But it's, or the it, people are bad. Yeah, or, the people are. But it's really is, and this is the big theme of America that we need to be honest with. We equate well with uh, being good. Mm -hmm. And we equate poverty with being bad. Yep. Because theoretically, in a land of opportunity, if you don't have wealth, then you're lazy. Mm -hmm. And there is some truth to that. But there's a lot of people who work hardest, crazy hard. And look at our laborers who produce, who get our food for us. Yeah. These are hard working people. And there's, dude, there's truth to the, the, the truth that people don't acknowledge, which is the financial system itself is weaponized, you know, through the, the people who create essentially the currency can extract all that wealth from anywhere. And no matter how hard you work, if they Doesn't turn matter. that, they turn that printing press on, you can't someone. compete. Yeah. And then the Wall Street moves in and the big, big businesses take over the small mom and pops and, and it pulls localization away. Whether it's here, whether it's in like rural agriculture land, it's the same issues happening all over the country. This is the revolution. Yeah. The real revolution, and the, to me personally, the reason for all the division has and continues to be, was it Henry Ford who said, if somebody said if people realize how the banking system works, there'll be a revolution tomorrow yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, if people realize I have to go to work for this job I don't want to do, barely allows me to sustain myself. Mm -hmm. When I'm falling behind because my job doesn't go up to the inflation rate and things are getting more expensive and my income is not. And then I know that there are entities out there who just get to print out money on a computer screen and give it to their buddies, yeah. which is essentially what's happening. Big time. Extraction. Evil. Yeah, it's evil. It's, it's evil. Ex I call it uh, it's extraction because if you look at all wealth, whatever you want to call it, whatever you measure it in dollars, it's just a measurement of human effort, human labor in these numbers. And then when someone can manipulate that and extract out, it's literally theft. And but people don't see because they didn't you. come and like pickpocket you or yeah, break into your house. They are. It's the same theft. Yeah. They're competing it's, it's, with you yeah. to buy the same goods and services that mm -hmm. are now scarce. So not only are goods and services becoming scarce to supply chain issue, due to the earth basically saying, hey, F off, you're not treating me right. So yeah. you're going to see some consequences of repercussion. Uh, well, not caring for me, right? And that's just my opinion because you can think about how that works. I agree. Whatever your yeah. opinion is, the facts remain that we have supply chain issues that aren't being solved anytime soon. Yeah. And you have a decreased amount of goods and services due to a global pandemic. I mean, like I said, due to a global The simplicity says, due to a global pandemic, the response. You're rapidly sure. increasing by tens of billions of dollars mm -hmm. per day. Fifty billion dollars yesterday, I think the Fed put it. Yeah, and it does. It doesn't. This is the, down the, normal. The, num are. the numbers are like, they might as well be imaginary because they, they are. are they just keep they are imaginary. Inflating. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a method of extraction because, you know, you print off however many trillions of dollars and you infuse it into the system from one end of the spectrum of wealth, and then it start they, that that wealth starts buying up resources and inflating the prices, and that's why houses and buildings and lumber and groceries and everything starts going up, and the system's just inherently built to to break to break down, and the answer is what you're doing here, like local work, produce food locally, and then you're not reliant upon transplants, automobiles, these massive like infrastructures that are fragile require assembly lines and they, they they can be broken down when just one cog of that machine pulls out well as they as they want them yeah as down. they want them to right For so sure. sometimes it's not artificial sometimes it's manipulative and you know what's crazy jason talks about this a lot i don't you know my grandfather um did the similar thing because he's from the world south of alabama so he bought a lot next to his house and he didn't have livestock because the food was cold but he always had like a big garden he went out an hour out to get quarter like cows and pigs and he bought it back and bushed it and had yeah. freezer. So he was kind of old school, so I was exposed to it, but it wasn't something that we did in my family, but we benefited from it because we always had access to meat and fresh vegetables. 
So, but Jason points out a lot, our garden founder, that all of this food would be barely enough to feed us for if this is all we had to rely on. Mm -hmm. And probably not even that. Yeah. Because we don't go any staple grain. So we would have to grow some potatoes, some corn, some staple grain, right? And then the amount of land that we have could probably produce food for maybe 10 people. Mm -hmm. So it's incubation more than yeah. it is like and a it, real agricultural system. Yeah, it's a proof you know? of it's a proof of concept and I mean in my in my mind, my vision of uh, what I call like the soul based economy, soul based society is that any community built responsibly has its uh, means to produ pr produce its own food and that could just be like you know if you have the ability to have a garden in your front yard your backyard whatever that you have food growing and then you can share with neighbors you know someone might have the ability to have some goats like you guys get some goats on one of your some places land, you know? and then you, get, you get milk and how many how much milk do you get? how many goats do you have and how much milk we only get? milk three jason how much do we get in a day now not that much now three pints maybe yeah uh three quarts three quarts yeah. but at the top it was like a gallon and a half from three goats a day um and that's just three goats yeah our entire, we're drinking it right now in our coffee yeah i mean yeah. i uh, yeah, one great goat could do that though. Ours yeah. are all free Craigslist. Yeah, they're not even like the most efficient milkers. Yeah. But the point is, just milking three goats have produced hundreds of thousands of calories yeah. that are healthy. And that's super, super nutrition nutritious. <laughs> and, it's the, and it's raw, which is the best. Yeah. The and absolute it's, best. And it's, I mean, goats are the most commonly milked mammal in the world for milk consumption yeah. um, because they're cleaner and they're a little bit more efficient than cattle. Yeah, right. it's delicious too. Like the, the first time I had the milk from here, I was like, man, I can drink like a, a gallon of this. He does. He yeah. does. He's like chug it. Yeah. yeah it's I have so a friend, I stand with me from Brooklyn. Uh, my friend Cavalier, amazing music artist and, and thinker and creative. He does, he's a vegan. Don't drink dairy. Drink that goat milk. And you told him, I was like, hey, man, you can drink the goat milk. It's not going to get you fucked up. Yeah. You know, your stomach is good. It's not pasteurized. And uh, his son has been drinking it because he's been sourcing it because he's like a one year old. So he's been sourcing it. So yeah. He's a kid, right? And so he tried it with a little chai latte. The next day, he was like, yeah, I'm drinking that shit. Plus, there's a lot of, you mentioned like your bro is uh, vegan, and a lot of that stems around like really industrialized agriculture. And But when you come and see that like, you're doing things right, treating animals good, like it, it makes a big difference, you know? Huge. People, if, I'm not, I don't want to dis. I'm not a vegan, obviously. I'm just yeah. don't know. I don't diss vegans. Um, I have friends in the, in the industry. I think you, you actually know Ryland. Yeah. Ryland's family, the Engelhardt, started Cafe Gratitude. These were raw, living restaurants. So, so look at this story. This group of people, organic farmers, hemp farmers of Ithaca, as hippie granola country as you can get, no offense, those are my people, I love them, move out to Cali and start growing food and doing living food mm -hmm. and then they started doing cooked vegan food because it makes more money everybody don't eat raw but then they started eating animals why because they, these are real intellectuals who are always learning yeah open-minded open-minded yeah. right mm -hmm. and when they realize that in a soil-based regenerative economy animals Play a vital role. Yeah, it's got to. You got to incorporate the full cycle of the life, full cycle the full food web. You have to be respons responsible to participate in all of it, and not create imbalances in the system. Change the whole shit up. Yeah. Also, just the amount of energy, the amount of work, and calories that you have to. Cause this is what people forget about in the industrial sector, right? We lose track of like the synergy between input and output. If an animal can graze. Take care of grazing land. I rotate them, mm -hmm. and then I can eat them and get all that nutrition density that I didn't have to work for. It's a lot more advantageous to spending my calories to grow all of these different life forms to recreate the nutrition density of what I could have got essentially from the cow's sacrifice. Yeah, participation. Right? Yeah, I, right. Like it's like, and and I, and like we all sacrifice. You know, I mean, we all get eaten one day uh, I, I like to say like life feeds on life you know it just it Who's is what it is it, and it's you know people um when you're detached from like the food process whether that's hunting or growing or whatever it's um 
people create these ideas in their mind of like what's going on and like they can say like oh well harvesting an animal is like an evil act when it's it's not because if you're if you're participating in the life cycle in a responsible way number one you care about those animals that population whether you're a hunter or a, a rancher like you, you you have to care unless you're it is an emotional feeling yeah. when you take to life yeah and it's a it's a sacred act i mean you're that animal is sacrificing for to provide you know just the same as the plants do you know the plants do as well and but people don't technically uh see that the same because there's not the eyes and the face and the, the emotions that you can that you they can don't have to deal with. with that at all it's yeah. been completely removed from them yeah and we saw that for a long time as privilege and progress and now we're realizing maybe it's not so much yeah and there's this this big uh i call it a pendulum shift because if you look at just let's just take america and what it became to right now which is like the peak of this uh like corporate industrialized global massive just behemoths of machines like you got walmarts and these big box stores and 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 even like you're get, you're even going away for that for like the amazon models where it's mm -hmm. just like these warehouses that are just controlling everything and with the economic system as it is like it it they're cutting costs so they they get success from it but the health of humans and the environment and the entire foods food web just completely gets punished and degraded and it's just not a I, I wish that was sustainable it. thing yeah. I wish that it was just a, 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 a unfortunate byproduct of greed oh it's not on yeah there's intention behind a lot of exactly. it. Yeah, right I, sure. I, it would be a lot easier to deal with this if it was just like yeah because people, be, people would be like oh yeah you know what, you're right we actually want what's best for everybody but there are for sure a, a group of people they're a type of person ego I'd like to call it like a shadow of ego that just wants to control everything and if people are flourishing in communities in a decentralized manner then how can a centralized body of whatever the fuck you want to call it from whatever uh, label you want to put on it um, they can't have that power they can't control like what's going on in West Oakland from DC or or Georgia or wherever or like somewhere in Europe you know like it just doesn't work that way because if people are happy and healthy and you have a good they solid community yeah, there's, someone's going to come in as an outsider and be like, oh, hey, we want you to do things this way. We're like, well, no, our life's pretty good. Like, we're taking care of ourselves. Everybody's happy. Um, why do we need you? And so that's why they have to create we'll issues make, we'll and make problems. You need us. Yeah, like, hey, we're going to... We'll make you need us. Yeah, we're going to yeah. go away and create some problems and then yeah. run some propaganda and oh, say yeah, that well, we'll it's these the water versus source this. Or yeah. we'll do something. Mm -hmm. I mean... Like they're doing to the... They've been doing to the natives since forever, like putting pipelines through the water sources to poison all the fucking sh the drinking like, water. Fuck your land. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, it's really bad. And I think that we don't want to see it because then we know that we have to have a stake in fixing it. And it's terrifying to know that you have to go and fight. Yeah, it's so a responsibility. Be responsible. It's not. It's not an easy thing. It's easy to just cash it off and say, "Well, I can make it right now." Mm -hmm. I mean, Jason's from Michigan. Bloomberg went to Michigan to campaign for president. I forgot the amount that he spent. I think it was like five hundred million dollars. I could be wrong. Whatever he spent was a sticker shot and would have fixed Flint water. Yeah, which still isn't fixed. So. You wanted to get some votes in Michigan, so you yeah. went and bought a bunch of ads. You didn't just take the money and go solve a problem that would have made you a hero. Yeah. These aren't dumb people. Nope. He's a really smart guy. He knew he could have solved that problem. I'm not going to solve that problem. Yeah. Deliberately. Yeah. The people need to look at you and see what happens when you don't fuck with the government. Will it poison the water and laugh at you? Yeah. Right? So we control that. Like they're still drinking bottled water in Flint. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Are you serious right now? I mean, some of it's been a little bit fixed, and the people, there were some lawsuits passed or whatever, but fundamentally, it's still a problem. The water, By the largest source of fresh yeah. water in the world. And the, and the, honestly, like the water pretty much everywhere is fucked at some level. Like yeah, there's contaminants, there's pollution, yeah. there's no excuse for it. That's all. why they don't want to do that there, yeah. because the other people start saying, what about mm -hmm. our water source? I mean, the chlorine, off smell, like you better get you a Berkeley water filter. Yeah. If you're not filtering your tap water, filter it. Um, just bite the bullet and buy that Berkeley. Yeah, I, I drink uh, spring water or filtered water and, you know, because I drink shit ton of water. Since I was a kid, I've always drink, I'll drink eight glasses of water with a meal. Um, and I can, 
I mean, I can taste and smell like this water is just bad. Like it's bad. It, it feels chemically, it feels uh, dead. Like it just all of my instincts are like, don't, don't even drink this. Yeah. Don't, don't drink this. And this is it's water so that's, that's in like, let's say, Ojai or San Diego or wherever. Like it's all, it's all shit, and it's unacceptable. And the thing is, like, yeah, like we're talking about responsibility and accountability. The people, people individually don't want to take responsibility sometimes and then accountability on like the bigger perspective of like a mass polluter who is um you know in the in the corporate world like maybe like a big seen as a big hero because they get so much profit or something but you're destroying all kinds of shit and like what what is in my in my mind true wealth is human beings working together um, and the land being healthy, you get health. Like what's what's beyond health? Like if you're healthy, you got food, you got good people around. And what do you need? What? Yeah. What? Why do you need I some can't numbers control to, you. to create some shit? Exactly. Right. I mean, it's 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 really. Um, I had a thought. I was I was chewing on. If we have a lot of people, there will be a need for mass agriculture to feed our current population. Sure. At our current population growth, we'll need the uh, size of arable land of Brazil by some studies to continue sustaining our life. To me, those are flawed studies, and there's a couple of agendas going on here we can kind of segue into. Yeah. We have what we're calling we don't have to go down the rabbit hole of, of I probably said what we're calling a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. That by all metrics of what, and I like to just take what the data is being presented, the official data, because I, if you can take the official data and still show the narrative, it's really problematic that people can't see it. I don't even have to say that they're missing something. I can take yeah. the same data you've accepted to use this narrative and show that you're kind of off. Well. If, you're, if our terrain and our health is the most important thing to our community in dealing with a pandemic, and we know that we have a, a public health issue, why is there a Green New Deal to fix climate change issues? All these trillions of dollars and all of these policy changes and deadlines, but no national campaign to increase any environmental toxins. <laughs> like yeah. the things that we know are happening. Yeah. I, I've debated with people climate change all the time. It's debatable whether on a mass scale mankind is creating some of these things the way we think, the way that we want to change our policy. Yeah, the policy the policy is not, not reflecting the real it's, it's naming one thing CO two and not looking at pesticides, water, heavy ocean metals, acidity. water. Uh, how you structure cities and communities and, and take Use away waste some water, right? yeah. it's, There's no real thought process to really improve that. I mean, just the ocean itself, the fact that it's being, becoming that acidic. Yeah. And, and no one wants to look at the pesticides that are running off, the aluminum particulates that's falling in from the air. Like, they just want to say that's one thing. aluminum particles. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, hydrogen cyanide poisoning. Hydrogen cyanide poisoning was in a major alarm with sound in 2019, particularly in certain cities like New York, etc. And if you look at hydrogen cyanide poisoning and the treatment regimen for environmental toxicity, it, the things that you would use to treat COVID are the opposite of the things that you would do to treat environmental toxicity. And if we, to treat and not, again, it's just basic level stuff, because I'm not a doctor, so look up treatment courses for environmental toxicity levels from hydrogen cyanide poisoning. One of the reasons why we have massive levels of hydrogen cyanide poisoning is because we had all these fires, right? We have all these fires around the world, Australia, all of that, and then the increasing on top of the environmental toxicity levels took it over a threshold where people are getting sick from the environment yeah. in the cities that just happen to have the most intense COVID death. Mm -hmm. And then the treatment regimen before you had a pandemic, if I identified you of having hydrogen cyanide poisoning, I gave you a treatment course to found drug. And I, I, I'm not gonna put, look it up. Yeah. What it doesn't do is give you oxygen. 
what they found is that giving someone out of oxygen to fix environmental toxicity issues was counterproductive and caused death. So they stopped using that course of treatment for hydrogen cyanide poisoning. Then you got all these people dying in New York City from oxygen, and it's coming out now that we may have killed some of those people from our treatment regimen. Treatment, absolutely. Yeah. Right? So nobody wants to talk about any of this, even though medical doctors are talking about it. Yeah, they don't want to take responsibility and to such a degree that they censor human beings who have expertise in areas for just raising the question, like, hey, we should probably look at this. And like, no, you, you couldn't even raise a question. You're, you're, so yeah. forget your water. Forget the soil health of your community. Forget producing localized agriculture systems. You're tethered to this just-in-time delivery system. You're controlled by the inflation. They just increased food stamps at 25%. Wow. Because they know the food is going up 25 or already has gone up. Yeah. This combination of shrinkflation puts it more like 30 40%. Yeah. Right? Because if you look at the price of how, what you're getting, and the argument is, well, we throw away food anyway, or Americans are fat, or... That's a different campaign than me spending more money for less product. Yeah, yeah, that's a direct reflection of the weaponized financial yeah. system that you want people get, hungry. gets extracted because whatever, you're getting paid the same, you're working for the same, you don't know, or in business, you're still acquiring the same um, amount of wealth whatever, the amount of currency doesn't go up anywhere to scale. And then someone that produces nothing for the economy that this wealth represents just so happens to, let's say, like a really extreme example, you just double the amount of currency that exists. And what does that do? It reduces everything the problem. by half. And I've got the currency. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so at the, last week, I don't know if people, and I mean, this is a free-flowing conversation. If, if, if it's hard to follow my apologies because everything is connected. And so things it are is. going to the other thing. It's a web. It's not, it's a, a, it's web. not a linear thing. <laughs> it's like the it's, yeah, guy it's on the wall line. with all the strings. Yeah. He looked, he looked crazy until they figured it out. Right? But, it, but it's not crazy because if you anyone can walk, anyone's free to walk into a forest and look at how a forest, a natural system operates. It's not a linear thing. There's different varieties of trees and plants and different microbes in the soil and different animals moving around, shitting and stomping around and scratching trees. And it's creating flow. this environment. They're natural flows, extinctions that have nothing to do with man. Yeah. Right? And natural new creations are different species. Right? I mean, Jason points out a lot. Jason used to be here for the podcast. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do another. But um, yeah. he was talking to someone about fires, and he's like, there are trees that are only released if a fire happens. Yeah. Fungus too, like uh, fire morels and stuff. Yeah. Part yep. of this process. Yeah. If winning where and how do you control it with controlled burns, etc., is how it's how it happened with people. But without people, what happens is you have different rain cycles. Sometimes it rains a lot, a bunch of stuff burns up, and the lightning hits it, and everything catches on fire, and it starts over again. Yeah. We just have power lines, not lightning. So we're artificially maybe we're fucking the natural shit up. Yeah. Yeah. But the flame keeps you in. The not the fires, but no, fires are part of Yeah, there should, they the should forest. Res, a responsible manage like the natives did for hundreds of thousands of years, control burns. And also, so you have the lack of control burns and the over forestation, over deforestation of trees. And then you get like, let's Tapping say, the water a, mono, out. a monocrop of trees that is highly susceptible to like a parasitic fungus that yep. can just wipe out an entire forest. So now you lost that mm -hmm. and, yeah. and the balances are... But the balance will always be restored. Event? Absolutely. Um, it's just our fragility, yeah. our people. And that's the humbling thing. To stop trying to control it yeah. and figure out how to how to shepherd it and live with it. Um, then maybe more blessings will come for us. Absolutely. There's I, a lot we don't yeah. know, obviously, about this planet and its potential. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the amount of, like, like there's a like go ahead and create a tree like as a human being like create a tree yeah. or you could just get a seed and plant it and watch that grow and you can try to explain away like how that works you can study it mechanistically and but you, can, and, yeah. but you can't create the damn tree that yes. nature created and then now you apply that to a forest and microbes and all that stuff and we our role as responsible human beings is to participate and to create inputs and to to, to 
you know, where it makes sense to create synergies, you know, like you look at the, the Amazon rainforest and how that was essentially created in a participatory way. They didn't invent the rainforest or any of those things, but they, they just kind of said, hey, we want to live here. Together, yeah, in a way that made sense. Oakland's very edible. Uh, if you look at how they get open, right outside this tree is edible. Really, every tree, I would say over half the trees you see in our neighborhood are edible. These are all plum trees. This makes you feel a weird berry that's like that. Nice. What's that one called? Uh, it's like a strawberry and a kiwi together. Oh. I don't know what it's called, but yeah. it tastes exactly like a strawberry and kiwi. Yeah. Right? And um, they only like pop out for a little bit of year, but it's edible. Yeah. Right? Like the grass that's growing out there is like garlic scrap stuff. Yeah. Right? Like uh, Oakland was really intentionally planted to be. You have fennel everywhere it, naturally. Yeah, and when there's not a whole bunch of heavy metals polluting polluting uh, the natural Here it garden is. that's going on, then, it's, it, then it makes it better, of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, we have to, we, we're sitting on two feet of wood chip, yeah. and if you're in West Oakland and all the environment's toxic, you have to bring in your own soil to grow food. For sure. Right? Yeah. Which is really like, it's really a problem. Um, but and, I think and no one's talk and no one in the official narrative is talking about any of the act the toxic pollutants as cause for any number of sicknesses, illnesses, things that have no known cause, potentially because people don't look in it or maybe they're paid to look in a different area as a research type uh, of the lobbyists. You know, lobbyists, all that. I stuff. mean they they pay it's, it's you know it seems to be well it's the average citizen, if you ask them in 2019 and you pose them, do you trust your healthcare system? Overwhelmingly, they would say no. If you poll the black community, do you trust the healthcare system? The numbers are totally higher. As a matter of fact, there's a statement that's popular in progressive black, you know, all the memes, everybody's got the memes. There's a meme that was super popular, it's been retweeted millions of times. It says, and I'm, because I'm saying it, I'm not saying I agree with this meme, yeah, yeah. but just to put it in the context how far we've allowed our, ourselves to be moved in a few short days. 2019, it was doctors are the black women, but police are the black men. And all the woke, not the awake, there's a distinction between the awake and the woke. Exactly. But all the wokes were like, yeah, yeah. Why you say that? Well, black, black women are dying of pregnancy, infant mortality rates are far higher for black women. When you polled in 1997, there was a study done where they asked doctors in the U.S., did you think black people experience less pain than others? And the majority of doctors, 50-something percent said yes. Trained medical doctors. They feel that they experience yeah. less pain. Black, black people the feel doctor. less pain. Wow. So there are some key indicators yeah. to black people's mistrust about the medical system. Absolutely. This meme was super popular. Police, a, a cop, doctors are the black women, a police are the black men. Basically saying that cops be killing black dudes and doctors be killing black women. And it was big on all these things to do to reimagine our medical system and make it like not, oh nice, not so, not so racist. Well, there were no corrective measures taken between now and then, but all of a sudden overnight, when you ask people that, this is really upset. Because I'm using that to challenge people who say, well, I noticed that you said this before. Yeah. When is that trust, where was that trust restored from those doctors who you said were killing black women? And why should black women trust those doctors? Well, this is different. It's not different. No. You're scared. The difference is the fear. The You're amount of scared. fear that has been injected into the psyche of... Of what? Humans, yeah. Like... You should be afraid. Fear is healthy. Can be. If Can it, be. If it's if it's accurate, it's like any emo any emotion. If it's honest and true, is healthy. But if it's if it's fake, if it's artificial, then that's where manipulation comes in. Because when someone's in an emotional state, they make decisions based off that instead of their broader awareness and, and paying attention and assessing and observing. Like, okay, what's actually going on here? Because you make quicker decisions, especially. I'm going like to trust the entity life. who I know has power. Yeah. So what I, in my explanation is, you know that this entity is not good, but you know that they're powerful. So you trust their power, but you don't trust their intention. 
but there's no one else out there who is being powerful because the people have lost that power. Yeah. If the people had some power, and we had, and this is the collectivism that there's a there's a there's a shift in political systems you need in society. You go from a need for rugged individualism to the need for more collectivism, right? Like we use those words as capitalists and socialists. Those terms aren't necessarily the best terms for Yeah, that's all weaponized and it, and it brings people to a narrow beam of thought where a, a healthy society, I always look at like balance, right? It would be balanced between like res respectful individuals and honest community. When you, when you get beyond the community, it's too far removed for any um, honest work to be getting done because it's someone from outside telling people within their area like oh how you need to exist as an individual and as a community when it could it should be completely up to the people who are participating in, in, their, in their in their community that's more tribalism mm -hmm. we're not set up that way um, maybe that is the better way for it was, people to live America kind of went that direction though from where it came you know like it, when the when the founders with the uh states rights and limited federal government they they still like hung on to some bullshit and then tried to create some 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 better shit um where it was more power towards the people and then over time like it just got usurped and sucked back into policy shifts and addition of laws and Blah blah blah, all this stuff. I mean, now you have, I mean, we, we've talked about the mass psychosis and the mental side here. Yeah. I have a new. Um, and that, hey, real quick, that was a good, that what was that uh, uh, after school video? Right? After school, yeah, it was a great, I've shared that many yeah, times. It's it's, super it good. was really good. They have more too. I've watched like the whole series. Yeah. Now. They have like a, a couple really good ones. Really well one, one thing that stood out to me about that was our inability to debate intellectually. Right? Like, point out errors or omissions and my facts are logic. Yeah. Well, people can do now that. It's, now, it's, now it's, if we don't agree and it challenges my thinking or my belief system, I just need to, like, cancel and block and pretend that these people don't exist. Yeah, I don't want to respond. I'm not going to respond. I find my echo chamber with, with cherry pick with yeah. what, I, what I think that I can have a battle at. Yeah. So I have a new thing that I've been doing lately with COVID. Right? And... You know, and I've been deciding like how transparent, how much do people disclose during these times that people are watching, there's just surveillance state, and everybody's thinking that stuff. And it's just never the way I live my life, right? Yeah. So I had a debate with a friend of mine who's a doctor and the medical doctor who runs ER, Miami Dade County, treated COVID patients, all of that. Smart guy, think, thinks Fauci made it in the lab. Yeah, he's not completely. Yeah. And uh, I said, he said, "Say, why wouldn't you be fascinated?" And I said, "Well, I don't trust this medical system." He said, "You got to trust the science." I said, "Great, I'm just going to do what South Korea does. This is what I do now to people. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do what South Korea does. So I have a question for you: South Korea, you have a longer life expectancy than America?" Yeah, they do about eight years. Do they have higher tests and STEM scores in America? Yeah, they rank number three. We're like way down in the late like, like two. So they're healthier, they're smarter. How many doctors do they have per capita? Oh, they have more doctors per capita in America. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna follow their COVID protocol. Yeah. No questions I ask, I'm following South Korea. Oh, and they didn't enslave my people. And they didn't make the vaccine. Mm -hmm. that are being used so they don't have any stimulus again. I just gave you all these identifiable metrics of why a logical person could trust South Korea's medical system over America. I mean, that's your question. Are you aware of what South Korea is doing? No. Nope. Oh, you're not? Okay. So if I follow their system, am I not following the science? I, I'm following better science in America yeah. by all measurable metrics, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to go into what was said, but it completely glossed over that. So now let's look at back home. Challenge the beliefs. Challenge. What are they doing there? Because I just gave you all of these things. They, they're better scientists than Americans are. Well, no, they're not because we invented the vaccines and blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we die quicker, right? If the, if the measure of, of intelligence 
The only absolute that I could think of sometimes is life and death. That's an absolute. They're living eight years longer than us. Yeah? How are we better than them? If all the stuff they're doing makes them live longer. Sorry, you don't have good answers for me. Stop debating me. Think deeply about what I'm saying. I'm not trying to beat you. Yeah. I'm trying to talk with you to get through. You're a doctor. You have skills. You can save lives. I don't have. If I got shot right now, you are a doctor. You can literally save gunshot wounds. Yeah. I can't. You're a mm -hmm. valuable member of society. We can't lose you to mass psychosis and just fall in line with people, bro. Yeah, but there's a, there's a difference of the um, acute traumatic protocol of the medical system like you know I was in the military I can handle someone get shot you know and get them to a to a place where they I can prolong their, prolong their life yeah um, and then the medical system is badass at, at that at treating trauma but when it comes to chronic illnesses neurodegenerative disease these different things that have these labels applied to them and then you attach it to a basket of symptoms and then they have these protocols that are they call treatments but it's really symptom management right because the, the thing never goes away and so as a measure of success yeah they make a lot of money off of that and as a measure of success like it's a it's a partial success like oh you still have whatever's wrong with you but, but you're you, have, you feel it a little bit less and you're alive and we're just going to keep you on that that open wound protocol as opposed to like let's get to the root cause of like why this exists and it goes back to not wanting to take responsibility and accountability so no one looks into the depths or people do but the conversations aren't allowed to have a credible platform in public discussion well they completely dismiss half of what the world's doing in their medical system yeah you go to the western countries especially asian ones they use chinese ancient medicine and they do their modern stuff together yeah it's not an either or choice. It's like you do both. Yeah. Right? Like you imagine you always try the ancient method. But yeah. before you even go there, right? I that's why I chose South Korea. Because they use both. Yeah. Right? You're looking at like the homeopathic treatment, things that they're sending to their people, their food and like all of that. And these people have you ever seen like what they eat in South Korea? Beef. Yeah, I've been I've been over. Okay, there. Yeah. no, yeah. they don't eat like super yeah. probiotic stuff. Yeah, it's clean. It's, clean be. It's much more naturally balanced. It's connected yeah. to nature, and and that's the thing. Like, there's so much intelligence within this natural world that you cannot. Like, your your most genius person and group of people, whatever you want to call it, that are never going to even come close to the natural wisdom that exists. That's why I like to contrast like artificial intelligence with natural wisdom because. Nature wins hands down every time. Over any amount of egos that you could acquire into a body or a group or whatever, they will never, ever, ever outcompete nature. Damn. I never say never. I don't think it's probable in our lifetime for sure. But well, we, we, I would make a distinction of a, a wise group of humans wouldn't even be trying to compete with it. They took the words out of my mouth. What, yeah. what is that. Yeah. Are we trying to be a god? That's what it looks like for, for a lot of people who want to control everything. You have elders and I want to hang on because if I just, I'm, I think that if like I'm in my late 70s and by my prediction, if I hang on 20 more years, we have reached the point where we saw the mental and aging decline due to crystal catch line and genetic modification stuff. Yeah. And I'll live forever. And it's like, I mean, who am I to judge you? But is that a good thing? Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't judge that either. But what I, what I feel of that is, it's a, it's a, it's another disconnection from the, the cycle of life because death is a part of it, and people have. There's so much uncertainty in the modern world in ways of knowing reality that um, people have a, a lot of fear around death no matter what their beliefs is or isn't you know there's just this unknown in a lot of people's it's lives and uncomfortability with death whereas how I personally look at, as, at death is an exchange of energy like we were there's a time that we weren't in this form and we were born and here we are and then we exit and 
I'm at peace with my death whenever that happens because it's a part of it's a part of what needs to happen. You don't have a choice. Yeah, there's no uh, choice. There. We all die. I, I would say that I'm not. It's not something I think about. No. But I do appreciate people who think about it because that's where you get a lot of your theology that is rooted in trying to figure out what happens. You know, um, there are people out there who will say, I know what happens when I die. And there are super spiritual people who say, I be meditating and I play all these frequencies when I meditate. But let me tell you, uh, you're born again and it's hard for me to explain to you, but I know, I'm like, okay, you could know. I don't know. I don't meditate. I don't even try to know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to find out really soon. Yeah. Exactly. Right? I'm not that worried about it. Yeah. Um, I do want to use the consciousness that I'm blessed with now to create a beautiful life. Yeah. Right? And, and, a, and a beautiful life for the people to follow, you know? Because let's just say you do come back. That's you know? difficult. Um, because what do you do when you're faced with people who you know? Like, I'm not a patient person, and I have a bad temper. It doesn't come out a lot, but because I'm thoughtful. But once I've made my mind that you're not somebody I want to deal with, I blow the bridge up. I don't care anymore, right? Yeah. It's really, you know, kind of like a, a zero to a hundred. Most people kind of left a little like, whoa, where'd that come from, right? Like, that came from a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> that, you know, I, I'm not going this direction, you know, and yeah. I'm going to do that with conviction, not a judgment, but just kind of, it's not healthy for me, but I'm finding myself, and this is more of a confession, losing my patience with people who I'm considering dangerous now, and what I mean by that is, you, you know what you're doing in right? Yeah. You're doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know it's not right to force pregnant women to take a fucking vaccine when they don't take any other vaccine. Yeah. It's not right to force a pregnant woman carrying her life to do anything she doesn't want to do. Yeah. Forget everybody else's life. Yeah, I get added public responsibility. That's stopped when someone's carrying a life. That's been pretty much accepted in medicine. Yeah. You don't get pregnant. You're very careful about giving pregnant women anything. You mm -hmm. haven't studied anything about this in pregnant women and you want to force it on them at the same time as, as okay, Texas, what they did, I don't agree with it. As, as a person, like, your personal feelings and religious feelings aside, I'm okay with my body and my life. Yeah. You keep that same energy. Yeah, it's got to be consistent. The message has got to be consistent or gotta else be it's consistent. not true. It's not true. Yeah. I've had people write me, you know, proses, paragraphs, explaining why this is different. It's not different, it's simple. Body. The reason why it's four words. Yeah. It's the reason. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, with abortion or no. Period. Yeah. Right? Now, other times when they're like not a new thing, it's the small pockets, which I know you guys are saying that the propaganda. George Washington man made it back to the small pockets. Okay. It's an interesting history when you look at vaccines and smallpox and when the outbreaks happened. I'm not even going to touch that, yeah. <laughs> but so now yeah. I'm just good at this. I just want to keep it straight. For sure. George Washington to you up until now had slave tea. He was a slaver. He was a racist. Mm -hmm. Now he's the man. Yeah. He used the argument where it, where it, where it makes sense for what they want to continue believing. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to just being honest about things, you know. Honesty is the. I look at you need you need honesty, respect, and gratitude. Because if you, if we respect gratitude. each other and we're mm -hmm. honest with each other and we're grateful for what we have, I mean, that's the bulletproof way in my mind of living well and living well not just as an individual but as a community because we respect each other. We're not lying. We're not lying with yourself. Lying with us. The number one thing that is it's that hard, people. So how do we? How do we? Un, I mean, it's not to just our responsibility, but first of all, I'm under the belief that the majority of people in this country are not yet completely under the spell. Sure. Yeah. But a good chunk of us are, a like thirty percent plus. Yeah. Right. 
and the thirty percent who are are more biased. affluent. Yeah. And my my correlation is between affluency is you have won. The world is hard to make it. It is full of beauty, but it's also full of suffocation. Play like a rock it's just, it's like suffering. Suffocation. I like how they say that. Uh, it's life is nasty, Buddhist, and short. Who's the Oscar Wilde? So when you win, when I'm living a better life than 0.0001 percent of people who've ever existed in this earth, mm. I want to protect that. I don't want to be like the president. I don't want to be worried about buying food, right? So my friends who used to be burn Babylon in college, it was all revolutionary, and we yeah. want to see Babylon burn. And then when Babylon starts to burn, they want to put the fire out. Mm-hmm. Because they realize, oh shit, I got a 10,000 square foot house. I got four kids. They're about to go to college. I got a wife. They got captured in those, uh, I call them the, the debt chains. You know? yeah, I make $450,000 yeah. a year. I, I made it. Yep. I made it. I don't want to see the system fall. I made it. And so they act accordingly. And not that many free thinkers out there who are wealthy, right? Except the ultra wealthy. And the ultra wealthy can do that because I don't ever need anyone. I can go right now, write a check, and sustain my life and my family's life for the next few hundred years. I can prepay the property taxes on this property. To a I can degree, hire part, sure. to a de- Security, my favorite. As, as long as that, as long as that system holds. Well, security is largely yeah. superstition. It does sure. not exist in nature. Yep. So that's Helen Keller, right? Like yep. life is a grand adventure or nothing. But as much as you can control it, you can control it. You gave us a billion dollars right now. It's gone. And how long would it take us to spend a billion dollars? Not a month? long. Yeah. To, 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 set up, to set up to set up what we're trying to set up. It's gone. We are up. Like yeah, it's gone. Gonna, we're spending money immediately, right? Yeah. We're hiring people, like, because that's enough to actually give people livelihood. Mm-hmm. Because that, the amount of money that you need is much less if you everything provided for. Yeah. Right. And I don't mean everything provided for some socialist. You provided yourself. Yeah. You're working, Participatory. You're participating yeah. in that, right? Uh-huh. And you got some wild, zany, wacky idea to invent something. Go and get it. Mm-hmm. But if that means a lot of people need it, then you have wealth. The natural way. The natural way, yeah. Right. It's okay. I like. Innovation. Yeah, creating, creating. That's the difference between creating abundance versus creating uh, scarcity to corner a market or something. You know, that's there. There's many manipulative practices that can accumulate wealth. Just like someone can be a very wealthy um, thief, but it doesn't mean that you, that, that those gains were gotten in a, in a, in a that's right That's the problem way. now. Most people who have the money did not earn it, mm-hmm. even if they don't understand it, because. If you're participating, if let's say, which this is the case, that the bank extracts wealth from a system and then provides a loan to someone who can get it with a credit score or a certain number of assets or whatever, it doesn't change the fact that the money, the currency, was created out of nothing and handed so that uh, you know a house that used to be 300000 is now $1.5 million, that both people didn't have money to afford it, but one could extract a loan from a bank and leverage that. So. When that happens on a mass scale, it just gets uh, silly. We're at on the sidewalk? Oh, no, it couldn't have been. I swear I just saw my talk. Go that. check real quick, yeah. That is, it must have been a cat that looked like the tail. A black cat, okay. The black cat tails that look just like my dog. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, I was good, wondering man. how did she do that. She is 17, she's a little magical. She magician, figured it yeah. out. Oh, she's yeah. on the porch, so she's like. Yeah. I have no, to build some good. Park to some stuff aware. out there. All right, my bad. You can just delete that out. Uh, I mean, I'm. We end up talking about this every week. We're going to talk about it Wednesday in our usual discussion. But I am really concerned with our collective mental state and our ability to handle the hard times. That are started. Yeah. Right? Like, that's my biggest concern right now, and the motivation for bringing neighbors together is so that you don't have to be afraid 
right? Like, so Jason just dropped off. Yeah. 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 Right? But they're on the edge. They're on the edge of a nutritional lifespan. They still have nutrition in there, but they're almost green. Yeah. Right? Like, they came from an industrial system that isn't able to move that product right now because of whatever reasons, or they want to donate it back. Yeah. It didn't come from us growing it. Yeah. Here, they're like, there was, while it's good that we have it, it's crumbling. And it's not only is it crumbling, um, I'd say the combination of, um, Accidental and intentional at, at a high level. It's very intentional at a below very that there's, there's there's many people who are just like participating and not aware of what's going on um, But that is like you can see it being weaponized against uh, Let's say when they when they say hey, this is a, a Pandemic of the unvaccinated and that you can't participate in these yeah. systems that yeah. we can control and we can shut you off So again, we fall back to individual and community security where if we're producing foods we don't need that shit. We don't need that thing. They can't that's control why they, you like that. That's why they need to. Then I can't make you do the thing. Yeah, can't make you do what. <laughs> what I want you to do. Bend your will against what your free will wants to do. Whatever that happens to be as a, as a as a human being. You know, if someone wants to go like swim out into the ocean and see what happens and just keep going and never turn back, like that's their. That's their what? That's their right. Yeah. right? I have no right to to tell them no. I can be like, hey man, that might not be the best. Idea, like you might not. But you're sure right. That's the right. idea that I actually have when people talk about uh, intense levels of mental illness and homelessness, and what can you do without putting people in jail? And I was like, you need to identify extremely rural areas. You need to put the drug rehab counselors and the mental health therapists and hire them to be in those rural areas. Mm -hmm. And the rural areas will keep people there. You don't have to have lot. Like you can like have people control for safety measures. Like if you're a danger to yourself or others, then obviously you have to be like locked down. But if you're not like that, it's not a jail. You can go where you want. Yeah, I look at uh... good, good luck, right? I mean, you're probably gonna die in the wilderness, but that's your choice as a free person. Yeah. Right, and to me, that's more holistic. You know that I'm not being. Maybe that person can get through their mental illness by being immersed in nature and not being. Confined like an animal, right? Like a lot of a lot of I, I would make um, I don't want to call it a, a thing just my observations lead me to um, look at a lot of what people label as mental illnesses as Sicknesses basically injected from just the way that things are like beliefs that people hold and like I call uh, like consciousness get tied in thoughts and when you leave those systems and go out to nature even on like a small scale when someone's feeling like a lot of pressure you go out into nature and it just like kind of goes away because nature is the ultimate medicine like it, it, ultimate. In, in so many ways just from, from the foods that you eat from the air that you breathe and from just like calming your mind and being in a balanced state. This is a toxic environment. Yeah. This is a pressure cooker We're that swimming in people are extremely yeah. like I mean, it's fortunate that I've been in special situations. Um, I mean, some of them are just a byproduct of my chosen lifestyle, but nevertheless, I've been in a lot of extremely stressful situations where the decisions you make in that moment are going to have, you know, dramatic effects to your safety and other people's safety. And It takes a certain kind of person to deal with that and not go crazy. Um, I definitely am self-aware of the intensities of my mental state. But there's a reason for that. I don't know how much you go into that on your podcast, but there's some things that we can do to drop the ego and be yeah. more tuned in. But even then... I've got schizophrenia. Like I'm, a, I'm from a family of brainiacs. Half of my uncles are that shit crazy, mm -hmm. right? They're just too much. They just think too, too much, much head. Too much too head. Too much head. Not enough heart. You know the connection. Not enough, right? The cities yeah. are the cities killed them, mm -hmm. right? And then they they fell on the drugs, and that was it. Because yeah. the worst thing to do when you're a super cerebral person is to get hooked on drugs. 
especially like an upper. Oh, dude, yeah, because you, you can go do an infinite rabbit holes and loops and it's over. It's just out there Ooh. now, gone, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's, it's, and these are, I mean, my uncle fucking was one was on the team that made the black one. His, his level of engineering was so high that so he came home one day, he's dead now, rest in peace, Uncle Scotty. He died in the Philippines. But uh, he came home one day, found his wife in bed with another man and killed them both. And they sent him to Saudi Arabia in like 76. Because the military was like, nah, you're gonna have to just go over there and keep making this helicopter. Yeah. Because you do the thing we need you to do. Fuck your wife or that guy. And you just can't come back. And he left. Came back once to see my grandma before she passed, but that's it. You know, he put his life, second half of his life, with 30s until his 80s in Philippines and Saudi Arabia where he put his time. My parents moved over to the Middle East in the 70s, so I was conceived that um, in Iran during that same time period, right? And he went crazy. Mm -hmm. He's a genius, right? My grandfather, who was also a lot of geniuses, he was like building cars, fourth grade education, but built you whatever, right? Master carpenter, no contractor, worked for TRW his whole career, retired him in there because he was a mason and they put him on or some, you know, whatever they do. But he had some money, right? The reason my parents got money because my old grandfather made some money. He always would say, hey, don't think too much. Read more. Mm -hmm. Think less. Go food. Go in nature. And the reason your uncles are crazy is because they don't go food. And they don't yeah. go in nature. And you know who's really big on? Walking barefoot on oh, the yeah. grass. I'm big on that too, yeah. His levels of, of insight, I don't know if it was just a natural thing. I don't know much about masonry, so maybe he learned it through his, that world. I'm not sure. But as I get older, I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking smart. Yeah. Like, Take your instincts. shoes off and walk on yeah. the grass. Like, why? Instincts, intuition. My feet are dirty. He's like, no, yeah. you just, no. That's yeah. not dirty. That's life. I grow from that. I'm like, oh, I never got it. Yeah. Until, like, I was in my 30s. There's so much benefits to it. You know, you, you're you connected to so, that energy of that ground. And also, your your foot is working in its natural, proper yes. state. Form. All the... All the Contour. muscles, all the way up the, the kinetic chain, all the way up through your spine. The posture has everything. to be better. Yeah. Right? Your posture literally has to be better when you walk in there. Because you have to maintain that. Yeah. It moves your body into alignment. And when you're walking on basically like squishy sponges. Yeah. And yeah. support, it creates weaknesses. And yeah. That a little rock. That if you do it a while, that's nothing. You yeah. just, just go over it, right? Like, we was made to do that shit. Mm -hmm. Right, that's why freaking Kenyans stay dominating long ass distance running. They dominate that shit. They don't even run it with no shoes on, bro. Yeah. And they're like, you act like that's a disadvantage. They don't even run with shoes on. No, you lose because you run with shoes on. You haven't got it yet? Are yeah. you this simple? <laughs> the people who don't use the shoes to run win. The people who use the shoes to run don't win. But yet, we're superior. They don't even run with shoes on. But yet, they still win. That's yeah. how we think. Yeah. People don't want to see, they don't want to come to terms with uh, the truth outside of belief. And that's why I'm big on saying, like, all beliefs are unnecessary. You can have them if you want, if it makes you feel better. But the belief itself is unnecessary to the truth that exists. And the awareness of that truth is what it is. And so that's why, for me personally, I always try to, um, if I don't know, I don't know. And if I know, if I know through my own experience, through my own awareness, then I'm at peace with that and I'm at peace with not knowing because there's a whole lot of shit that you're not going to know you you can know, have all the information of every human being that's ever lived and you're still not going to know no. fuck all compared to like most what exists yeah. I mean well maybe I can't every human being ever lived including the ancients we may know a little something something but uh, but, but. In the, but I'm talking like on the infinite spectrum of what's going on in the universe and they definitely knew some they knew a lot more I, I believe that uh you know, we have a lot of gadgets and widgets and things, but um, when you go back in time, people they just have did it. a lot of yeah. awareness and knowledge. And I, I agree. I think that we're, we're, yeah. we're a very primitive version of our former self. I agree. Yeah. Right? Like, we do similar things. Like, these things are amazing. Yeah. I can go on here and talk to someone in another, world, another part of the world and see their face mm -hmm. and talk to them. 
But what if we did that through astral meditation? Yeah. How is that any different? And 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 it's really interesting when you look at this. Communication has gone up, but potentially like the 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 modes of communication, but the connection between human beings has arguably in many ways reduced. You know, people, people are people are. People are Divided, more hostile. The more we're tapped in, because it's yeah. not real of true connection. Mm -hmm. It's even crazier fascination that when you look at the minerals inside the phone, it's the same thing that were in the chicken head pieces that mm -hmm. people supposedly wore the astral plane. To me, that's what makes me believe it. Yeah. Because it's literally like, okay, well, those minerals do those things. Yeah. We just did it in a very cumbersome way. Yeah. I know it's weird to think about it that way, but if I need all of these things to be made and I just can't go meditate at a frequency and talk to some people in another place. Yeah, consciousness. I mean I have I have my own experiences with things and that's why like again it comes down to like awareness because I don't have a belief about it. I have a an experience or knowledge it. of it and so but I can't like people can't communicate their own experiences, especially it's when they're experience. beyond like you know, we can we can describe this and we can show this and it and it makes sense. But when it's something intangible in consciousness, it's like people are gonna have their own opinions on it if they've never um, experienced it. But I, it I would make say it that it's go experience it and find your truth. Yeah. But if you're not experiencing any type of uh, birth or, or or death, right? Which is I love that after school about the the wine, the psychedelic wine. Did you see that one? Right? Uh, yeah, oh, it's literally it said, talk about the birth of religion was psychedelic. It takes back all the major religions and the different stories and the things that people like were doing and ancient groups where people go to a place and they would have this, uh, yeah. whatever where the wine was. Even different states because, you know, like a psychedelic or a plant or an animal, different medicines, these, I call them natural sacraments because there's so much weaponized language. There's those methods into states of consciousness and then you can look at um, like East like Tuomo and like Buddhism and different different ways of um, breathing that people can tap into other states um, we have there's so many natural technologies that exist outside of ourselves and within ourselves that we can tap into and it's a uh, I know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great thing. It may be it's time to discover them. I think it's like, yeah. I'm an optimist. Uh -huh. So, um, people ask me, I'm, I'm into preparedness. That's one of the reasons why I form an organization sure. about neighborhood preparedness. And a lot of my friends, until recently, I don't get this shit no more, but why are you always talking about how much food and water you have and your security flaps and, and demanding that people go shopping and like, you know, like, all that negativity, man, it's like going to affect your mind. And I'm like, <laughs> What are you talking about? It's not negative. I'm pretty positive. Yeah. I plan on living. Yeah. <laughs> That's you, what. You, I'm not negative. You've got a solid foundation to fall back upon, or like a an insurance policy, whatever you want to call it. Like you, like why would we you know not it want. Doesn't make any sense. And in fact, there was there was a point in time within America's short history where that sort of preparedness was encouraged as a form of national defense. Now it's not. Now it's On the On Facebook, they ask you to turn in people. I saw that. It yeah. says, are you into the preparedness? Yeah. It's National Preparedness Month, and that's what Facebook choose and use that word specifically. Yeah. You know why. Have you, so, if you follow, um, I call it my algorithm because our brains work funny. You can input things into your brain and not think about them deeply and still come to you. Your subconscious will work it out, right? Yeah. I noticed that in the last, like, six months, all these puppet centers I follow, number six, mm. They know that, too. Yeah. They know more Americans are getting into preparedness yep. because the seafood price is going up and then the algorithms are feeding them this stuff. Mm -hmm. So the algorithms are feeding people proper stuff at the same time as the government is now doesn't trying want to, it. Yeah. doesn't want it. Yeah. I, I don't know what connections there, if any, um, but it's really interesting that I, I just, like, a lot of people I talk to now are like talking about the thing, mm -hmm. right? And like on YouTube, 
And they'll name one of the five or six popular YouTube puppet channels and they'll have seen it or know who they are. And I'm like, two years ago, this was fringe stuff. Yeah. So the, the, the subconsciousness is knowing and like we made all these zombie movies and shit. We yeah. knew. Yeah. There's no, stories, yeah. there's stories to uh, illuminate certain realities that can come to existence when but, uh, certain action happens. I, I think that, unfortunately, people just seem to be wired that we have to have some tough times to make strong people. You guys know the quote. Yeah, yeah. They're stuck in a stuck in a loop in a habit. Mouse. Oh, mouse. Jason. Mouse. What can I do? Oh, no. uh, and, uh, Shoot it. You see it? No. Little bitty mouse so just came up out the. Uh, so, he's in the in uh, whatever that thing's called, the, the middle thing. Is an that's a that's a good sign, right? Sometimes. Mice means no rats. <laughs> he was cute. Did you see him? Yeah, oh yeah, he was a cute yellow guy, cruising through through yeah. paradise over there. Mouse, mouse right, I would have shot it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, my air rifle has been active out here. You can, you can edit that out. We shoot mice and rats and vagrants. <laughs> yeah, gotta. You know, sometimes it's usually a, a, a deterrent that's not going to really hurt someone, but it's going to hurt them a little bit. Mm hmm. So, I'll tell you that story. I'll tell you after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny one. Uh, he's got an editor. It's not live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, I, I mean, it's it's. We've been pushing. You ever seen that video of the kid dancing on the hill? The leadership video? I think I sent it to you guys. It's a great video. It's the kid dancing on the hill at a college party. And it's just one kid and he's doing this, you know, funny dance. Yeah. And everybody's laughing at him. And the girls are like, look at this loser. You can see people snipping at him. And he's like, I don't care. I'm fucking doing my dance. Yeah. Right? And like 30 seconds goes by and then one fat dude comes over. He oh, starts yeah, doing a dance with him, yeah, like yeah. your first follower. Within three minutes, by the time the guys talk about the, you know leadership, people are running to the hill, so they don't look like losers. Yeah. Right. And you don't see the guy anymore. He's gone. He's disappeared. Mm -hmm. does, it, does this leadership matter? Yeah. So, will anybody remember it? If you just came in the party and saw everybody dancing on the hill, you have no idea why that party's passing. You just came in and everybody's fucking rocking out. Yeah. You didn't know that that party was dead before one guy mm -hmm. said, this is dead. It's not the kind of party I want to have. People are coming to dance with us. Yeah. People are people are waking up. They're to, waking up. To, to realize the power that they have as individuals that we all have. And... There's um, been this illusion cast upon consciousness in society where people believe that, you know, someone in a white coat or someone in a suit and tie or someone with a camera in their face is, is where power comes from. And it's not. Every individual has power. We're all created. We're all here for a reason. And um, tap into your power. Tapping in, yeah. Uh, and, and, and you're not a. F the followers and leaders. Is a, is a changing thing. It's Sometimes you just go first. Yeah, it's an imbalanced way it's of it's viewing things. To say it. that to say that someone is fit to control the lives of other people as a, a responsible leadership is someone who is cares and is concerned and is a participant within the community in which they leave. Not leadership some found them and then person they responded in an ivory to it. Tower. Yeah. Right and. Yeah. and you see somebody doing something that you believe in and nobody's following them, know that the most effective form of leadership is to really be their first follower. Yeah. Right? Like sure. that's what that, that was the biggest part of that video to mm -hmm. me. That was more important than the guy. He made him. So the second person solidified it. So if you want to go first, that's brave and courageous. Everyone's not brave and courageous to go first. But what everyone can do is be the first follower. Because the guy already broke the ice, or the person already broke the ice. Yeah. And if not the first, be the second. Yeah. Don't wait to the group to run up. That's corny. Yeah, right? and, when the, and when the group's going on, you may be jumping into an ocean of shit. You know, you may be jumping into something that 
you have a mass psychosis situation, right? When it's the, the best thing is to do is to yeah. be the opposite of the crowd or to go away Sometimes. from Sometimes, yeah. yeah. All right? Because now when I, you don't know what they're doing. You mm -hmm. don't know how it was formed. Yeah. You don't have a, you know, an intimate knowledge of, of what that movement is even about, mm -hmm. right? But people are under mass psychosis. I think that we all are, even those of us who are awake and not woke, until like, we're, we're still on these things. Mm -hmm. We have to, regardless, we have to participate in uh, the world. Yeah, and I like to call it, there's there's a, definitely a sort of, uh, I wouldn't even say sort of, it's a, I look at it as an open air prison because there's certain actions that human beings to participate have to do, right? Even if you don't want to, in order to not get thrown in jail or fined or part. this or that. The, the completely ostracized when you're not able to reach the community that you want to help organize. Yeah. There's a sacrifice to being an organizer. Yeah. You gotta be smart in how you maneuver and but over time I feel like the, the, the shift in consciousness has already it's already begun, you know, long before all this and they were coming to like a head of essentially egos that really want to control and then people who are just aware of the fact that like that's not doesn't doesn't benefit the earth or individuals whatever in in the long run it doesn't it doesn't work that way yeah, or your own like mortality yeah your own yeah right. who you are and what so, you what you came here to so do. i have a question how do we avoid an american genocide um being how do we avoid it here's my 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 uh awareness of how things work is to be locally active, responsible, engage with the community, know who is in your community, know who you are, and always have each other's back. It's like, hey, you know what? We all rally around around something. All human beings I've found, no matter where we're at, we all care about other people, children, you know, um, living well to the best of our abilities. And so if we can rally around that, it's like, hey, we're actually on the same page, regardless of like where we come from, different areas, different perspectives. Like there's a fundamental human thing about human beings. And if we can just rally around around that, then in our local communities, and we don't have to do it on the national stage or anything like, but if the communities come together in that way, then there's security there. And then communities can be can link up and you go, yo, that community over there is pretty tight and like we're on the same page the and, bubbles start out and, and we have these bubbles yeah. and it's kind of like um, like we cut our we cut ourselves and the blood comes and creates a scab and it stops the bleeding, you know, but if we're a hemophiliac and that doesn't happen because the communities are not tight and able to do it, then you bleed out. But if if we're strong as, as communities in decentralized manner, we can patch it because we can be like, yo, you know, like you could be like, hey, something's happening. Mark's coming here. Let's go, like, support him. You know, he's a, he's a bro. And the same thing. We had going, a fire over yeah, there. We it's like, go hey, we're going to provide some, like, food. Or, or like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I'm, I am an optimistic. I'm also realistic to know that. I ask that question because I do believe that that's the path that we're headed. I would agree. There's, certain, there's, there's definitely elements of humanity that want that to happen. Yeah, they want sure. it. Yes. They're pushing us toward it. Yeah. Um, and people are falling for it. To some extent, Unfortunately, yeah. I'm, that, I'm trying to be more self-aware and not fall for it mm -hmm. because I'm getting angry and don't think clearly when you're angry. Of course, yeah. Um, that's the power in making <laughs> you, That's the power in, in inciting anger among What's groups up, of people. What's up, Broadway? So, and... But at the same time, I don't want to miss the opportunity to be like, no, you were right. You were right to have been angry, and you probably should have acted on that sooner before things got worse. Yeah, or to be to be aware. So anger is a, and it, it has value when it's true, but it's also, like for me, I used to have like really bad road rage, but then I reflected on like, why do I have, why does it happen? Like I'm either rushing to get somewhere, someone cuts me off. There's no, that person didn't mean me. They're not, not trying personal. to fuck with me. It's yeah. not personal. But but the reason I would get to anger is because I wasn't prepared properly. But if I go and prepare, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna number one, like leave five, 10 minutes early, whatever, and whatever, 30 minutes, however long I need to 
be at somewhere where I'm not rushing, and if someone cuts me off or whatever, it's not a big deal. I just they got to get somewhere faster than me. Go for it, you know. Um, and so the point is that I can, through awareness, we can expect certain things and not get triggered into an emotional state when we're in the heat of the moment, and then we can act out in a manner like chess. You know, we can we can act strategically in what's best for what we know is good, like ourselves and our community and and to make the the proper plays because it's really easy for an outside force to come in and let's say like people were playing chess or playing a game and some third party comes in and just says like hey look over there something's going on and then they change the game up yeah. and then they and then they go whisper in the ear like yo that group bro just cheated and then yeah, you do the same thing over there and you have an argument that they just spun up and that person's long gone and they come. Now, meanwhile, they're robbing your whole your whole yeah. garden. They're, they're behind you, just yeah. there, while you're fighting over yeah. what they did. I mean, we, I, I, my biggest concern is that you're seeing an intense, dark division. I, like I said, I'm I'm speaking to myself as well as other For people sure. yeah. to not get caught up in that. Absolutely. Um, because your language becomes your action. And, you know, we were saying, like, oh, you got to watch these people. We're going to have to take them out. And I'm like, that's some crazy talk. Mm -hmm. I'm oh. just saying, that's some, I, and I'm talking crazy, right? So yeah. I'm like, okay, let me be self-aware. I'm talking crazy now. Mm -hmm. Not that I think I'm wrong, but let me just always not second-guess myself, but be, be conscious that I'm acting out of emotion. But at the same time, I'm like, are we? There are... Things happening. Sure. Like yeah, there's an intentional. <laughs> like, there's thing. an intentional like. Yeah, and, and, thing going on. And, and I say like you know, we're sitting here having a conversation. Everything's great, but it doesn't mean that someone else isn't like, hey, I don't want those people to have that conversation. Oh, they don't want to have so, that conversation. So, for for sure. sure. But but in this example, like to say, the worst there's so, there's someone actually doesn't want this to happen and we just are in a bubble of thinking like everything's great and no one really cares and and then that that person has an advantage because we don't know they're there if we don't know if we're not aware of it we know and, big brother's always watching they're on your phone yeah. right now yeah for sure so big uh, <laughs> we're always watching but but if we're but not if, always not in the woods when you're, you're no when you're aware of uh, um another person like let's just say we're camping in the woods right and then some random like Bigfoot let's just say it's like Bigfoot and, and they just are like hey we want to fuck with these human beings and if we're not aware of that then we're not going to have but by the time Bigfoot shows up and does whatever Bigfoot wants to do then we're there's done. nothing we can do but if we're aware and like hey Bigfoot's uh, over there and it looks like he's fine let's uh let's maybe like not be make some noise or let's make let's let's make Bigfoot not want to come in here or let's move let's let's maneuver let's get out of this situation and that's um, you can make a plan to deal with it yeah that's just situational awareness so so what about people and I, I mean it's funny this is your podcast I'm over here, I'm no it's question. all good I want to know it's a conversation, uh, yeah. what, what about people who are hell bent that they figured it out and right now you're just being ignorant and we don't comply and my patience is running out the people who want to fly. Yeah, I'd say that's a highly emotional state and to examine what you think you know because I, I, I know from a, I don't want to get into like knowledge versus knowledge, but it, it's very clear that there are some people who believe that they know some things when they, when you get into the depths of it and they don't actually know what they believe themselves, they're just operating from what they were told to believe. Propaganda. And I would say for it, I do this myself and everything. If I, if I know something, it's because I know it. Otherwise, I'll say like, hey, this is what I think. This is what I, this is where I think it's going. But when I know something, it's because I truly know it. I've examined it. I've looked, I've looked at all the angles. I've studied it. Um, and so, when you get to people who are like, hey, we know what's best for everyone else. It's like. You could claim you know what's best for yourself, but you can never fucking claim that you know what's best for someone else. And at that point, when you're trying to impose your will upon another being or another group of beings, you're in the wrong. That's that's what I would say the delineation of good versus evil is, is that evil is the desire to control others. Good is the allowance of free will to exist. And 
sure you could say like someone a criminal a murderer would have the free will to kill someone else but that's a violation of that yeah, will. Took so, from someone else. yeah so as long as if we, we can agree that out. we're not going to violate each other's free will that's fine unless it's in defense of someone else like if we see like some kid walking across the street and someone's chasing with a bat we're going to intervene in that situation and we're going to stop that free will which is a violation of someone else's but we're not just going to see someone riding a pink unicycle down the street and like yo i don't let's like pink them. unicycles let's go stop that shit you, Joe does. you don't like pink. i mean 